So Charlemagne the God was on This Week with George Stephanopoulos, and he was being interviewed by Jonathan Carl, and he was talking about Kamala Harris. And Jonathan puts, uh, he puts Charmaine on it once every couple of months, he, he pops up on there. So Kevin Lockett on X said, oh, that's me. I said, well, I do agree with Charmaine the guy that Kamala Harris should be doing interviews at this point in the campaign. I don't get why the media is treating Charmaine like he's the political voice for Black Americans. So I'm going to cover Kamala first and talk about Charlemagne. Yeah, it's crazy that Kamala's not doing interviews right now. It's insane. Like, as soon as she was anointed the nominee, like, she should have been on a media blitz. She should have been on CNN, uh, the, the Young Turks, MSNBC, you know, uh, 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 CBS Sunday Morning, like, podcasts, YouTube. Like, she should be, she should have just been all over the place talking about running for president because it's so late in the process, but she's not doing it. And the only reason I think she's not is that the people who's running her campaign don't trust her yet in interviews, which is not good. Because if you trusted your candidate, you say, we're, say we're going to schedule you for this and this and this and this and this. This way you talk to Joe Stephanopoulos and then, uh, then we'll, we'll even get you on Drew Barrymore. <laughs> we just, they, they'll just, she'll just be on a media blitz. And I don't think they trust her with answering questions because I don't think they trust her enough that she might not say, they, she, Trump can say crazy things that doesn't matter. Kamala at this point can't say anything because the race is so close, allegedly by the polls, that uh, they don't want to put her out there. She says something that's going to make her slip in the polls. Now, either so, most likely, I think eventually she probably will do a bunch of media, but I think they're prepping her and prepping her and prepping her to uh, make sure that she answers every question like a robot, which is not good because a lot of times, a lot of a lot of times, you want your candidate to be regular like plain spoken like they can, you can just speak to them and just give like relevant answers it's not like stacked answers um but yeah i think she, they're prepping her because it, it makes no it makes no other reason why she's not doing it especially especially since it's been so many weeks since she was she was given the nomination now back to charlamagne yeah now i like charlamagne i've known charlamagne since he was wendy williams's co-host back in the day i remember when when these husband allegedly got charlamagne fired and then he started the Breakfast Club, and then he found greater success with that. So Charlemagne has been super successful. He got he got Breakfast Club. He's written books. He got the podcast network that he has. So it's, so I, I totally I totally get it with Charlemagne. I just don't like how the media acts like he's the arbiter for black voters. Yeah, you know some guys. Are, well, he has a he has a show. Is when is he has a huge platform? It's like eh, yeah, but so does Ryan Seacrest and Elvis Durant. But they're not putting those guys on talking about politics. Now, again, Seacrest is not talking about politics. Seacrest is like, I am not messing up this Wheel of Fortune money for y'all. <laughs> I want that money. <laughs> and Elvis Durant, I'm not sure how much politics they talk about Elvis Durant. Probably a little bit. But it's more about, but Elvis Durant is kind of like Charlotte. Like, if you look at The Breakfast Club, they are they interview mostly hip-hop and R&B artists and actors. And they talk about, and they slip, and they slip in politics uh, off and on. But it's not like, the, uh, the Breakfast Club is uh, the black version of The Daily Show. It's not that. It's not, you know. Now, if if Charlemagne and, and Envy were talking about politics every day in the morning and the audience just feeds off of that, that's totally different. I would totally understand why Charlemagne would be on TV, on CNN and ABC and all these other different networks. I would totally understand it. But it's not that show. And Charlemagne has donkey of the day. <laughs> that show's not that serious. And plus... There's other people, there's other black folks on YouTube who, who are independent journalists, independent thinkers who talk, who cover these topics every day. There's a bunch of them, but they don't want to talk about those guys, talk to those guys, because those guys will talk about the black wealth gap. They will talk about reparations. They will talk about the prison industrial complex. And these are things that Charlemagne kind of touches on, maybe not reparations, but he kind of touches on these things, but he doesn't go all in because Charlemagne likes being a star. Charlemagne likes being on TV. Charlemagne likes selling books. So he's not going to do anything to hurt his business, much like Ryan Seacrest. Like he's not, he, Charlemagne just kind of, he kind of dips around it. He puts his toe in it a little bit and he kind of takes it out because he does, he likes the notoriety and the stardom that he has right now. But yeah, I, ra I would rather see uh, other dudes on there and women too, but who really want to talk about like reparations, uh, want to talk about the prison industrial complex, like why is so many black folks locked up? We're only 13% of the country. Like people keep on saying, why are we the majority of the prisoners in the system? They, you know, why are there so many prisons who, who are making money off these prisons? You know, the black, the black wealth gap. They always talk about how black women do not make as much money as white men. 
black men in the same boat. <laughs> and like a uh, black man average like two hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> but they always seen this. So they go, black women don't make this much money. It's yeah, we don't either. <laughs> Some of us do, but a lot of us, you know, are still struggling out here too. But yeah, they so they didn't want to talk about the black wealth gap. So that's why they don't put a lot of these folks on because if they if they if you get really astute people talk, who don't understand politics and economics. They don't want to talk, put those guys on because they don't make people think and put a bigger focus on, on, on black people as a whole. And, and, and also destruction of the black family. Uh, they destroyed the black family and we need how to read it, bring it together. Like they don't want this discussion on TV. That's why Charlene is good for that. I think D.L. Hewley was in this spot a couple of years ago. They were putting on D.L. on a lot of these things. But D.L. Is a, has a hair trigger. So he is Charlemagne-like where he'll kind of dance around subjects. But if he gets really irked, He'll bring something up where the producer or the team news director is like, oh, no, <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> Get him off. Get him off. Cut the mic. <laughs> so you can't really trust DL on CNN at times or ABC or CBS because you don't quite know when he'll just go off the rails. Um, so that's why they kind of put Charlamagne on all the time. But what do you think? Uh, do you think it's good that Charlemagne's on here talking? At least there's somebody out here that's a little bit different talking about these these issues. Or do you think there's other people out here who who are more astute about these things who are bringing about I'll talk about a wider subjects when it comes to Black Americans and voting? Tell me what you think. <laughs>